Last Oasis sucks. That's actually what the developer said about it. So that's definitely a pretty interesting way to start off today's video. It's also a very interesting way if you're trying to sell your game. This game sucks. Interesting. Yeah, that is how you kick off your free weekend in Steam. <laughs> It's a strange situation, also a pretty damn strange situation for Steam Early Access and what it even means. And it's also funny enough because the lineage of that developer does trace back to a few hundred meters in that direction yes. where they were here until very suddenly they weren't and things completely seemed to go to shit. Uh, they made a Early Access survival game called uh, Kings, Kings and Men? Of Kings, of and, Kings men. and Men. Yeah, yes. Which is a great title for a game, but ultimately resulted in... It's either in this building or in a friend's house, one of the monitors they sold when they were leaving the country. Yeah, a <laughs> bit of a strange situation. And what was crazy is that then they, you know, they, I think the original founders, they moved, some other stuff happened, and then Last Oasis explodes. And it explodes onto the scene with humongous interest. Loads of sales, loads of people trying to play the game. And the reason why is that it was a survival MMO-ish game. I mean, what even is an MMO these days? But yep. the idea was you had these massive wooden walkers and they would actually be your base in a sort of persistent post-apocalyptic world, right? So the idea there, the core fantasy, is pretty damn cool, right? And it was cool enough that so many people tried to play it that the servers basically just exploded. They had to pull the game offline for seven days to repair, and if somebody wanted a refund, they would get a refund. Now, it wasn't just that stuff being cool, right? The walkers, because you also had directional uh, melee combat. You had grappling hooks, as I guess every highly rated game does. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff basically was a marriage of theme and gameplay that was making something in the survival genre that felt new, felt unique. And that's a really strong fantasy. Sure is. The problem, though, is reality. And how did that reality turn out? Well... A bit of a situation that made things messy, where basically endgame groups could utterly ruin everything for smaller groups or solo players. Like if your walker was destroyed, kind of like that's it, you are, are screwed. What you've worked for is gone. Essentially game balance issues, but the problem is you do want an almost MMO-like experience with that persistence, and well, that kind of means that you're just in a fraught position where your your game overall doesn't really work for most of the people who are trying to play it. Yeah. Where basically, as a solo player, you could you know you could start playing, you see a walker approach from the distance, and that's it. You're screwed. You literally cannot escape. Yeah, that's interesting because it reminds me of a quote for something else I was doing recently. But it was around the time I think it was Rust around at the time it launched. And it was, oh, I can't remember what set it was for, in Gadget or something, but it, someone who was like dealing with MMOs said, like, this was basically the birth of the survival genre, was like, other MMOs and like some of the building ones, some of the theme park ones, because it was all MMO based, they just don't have the teeth anymore. It was like, they don't have the, the excitement, they don't have the real danger anymore. So it's interesting to see the survival game genre kind of have that like work for it so well, but then you can see how easy it can go wrong if it's too dangerous. Because I think that's even feedback with V Rising, which was, you know, past, what, two and a half million sales recently. It's doing extremely well. People still love it. But it did the same kind of issue of it's a dangerous world to have PvP and to have, like, other players, people interact with you. And if they do that in a bad way, it can kind of impact your experience. So it's interesting that, like, even after four seasons of development, they still, in Last of Us, struggle with that problem of, yeah, sorry, solo players just don't... It's like... It's almost like you ha there has to be fodder to that experience, right? If you're in the group side, you want to have that predatory feeling of, listen, newcomers, we own this town. You can't come in here. Almost like the like you're, <laughs> I guess, in a weird survival way, you're kind of Mad Max or the Warriors kind of feel yeah. to it. But then but. for them, they have the problem of, oh, there's now no challenging stuff for us to do. Yeah. So they end up in this situation. The game's just not really working for anybody. And this was after four uh, seasons worth of development. And the way that they put it is by saying, the game sucks. Here's the quote. When I say the game sucks, I mean I'm not having fun for long when playing it. Not as long as other survival games I enjoy, and I'm not alone in that. Uh, we could argue back and forth why Last Oasis is objectively not fun and what needs to be changed to make it great. We did for four seasons. And while each season got rid of a ton of problems, there's the fundamental issue. I personally am not having fun when playing the game I'm making for long. 
<laughs> After season four, it finally hit me. I've been in a wild goose chase. I've been trying to chase down the reason why players don't have fun in LO. This is a fruitless exercise until I can find out why I'm not having fun. Suddenly, the question was no longer, what can I do to fix LO? The question became, if I were making it from scratch, what would I do? And that's why season four is the overhaul. And that is how they launched season four, which also had a Steam free weekend by saying, hey, free weekend, here's season five. Also, the game sucks. <laughs> that's a way to so, do it. Eh? So what does it do? Well, it makes it so that uh, the, you know, the change of the new season, the majority of instances are PVE only. You can go PvP if you want. You will be incentivized by better quality resources, but PvE is more the default there. And the Nomad focus, that's gone. You need to build a base. It'll be a permanent base. It can be destroyed by AI. It can degrade over time, but different to the past situation. The walkers are basically just a means of getting around to roam outwards for some specific missions, that kind of thing. But the whole idea of, you know, your base, your whole life being on your walker, that's gone. And that, you could say, does erode from uh, some of the core premise that initially made the game explode uh, so much. And also, the progression system now focuses on acquiring consumable build schematics from PvE fights and exploring, rather than just progressing up a tech tree by earning experience. Um, and this also then means the game lets solo and small groups basically better control the level of risk that they can expose themselves to rather than being swarmed. So their idea, I suppose, is a game that is fundamentally a bit more designable, is a bit less daring, a bit more safe, but hopefully one where more fun can be found within that. And the reviews have certainly been interesting. If we look initially, you can definitely see a lot, number one, a lot of reviews corresponding to a lot of sales, a lot of people playing the game, a lot of negativity, but you can actually see, I mean, look at month two, a lot of positive reviews, a lot less negative ones. Yeah. And generally speaking, you know, there's always a decent amount of negative, but you can see that some things were going well enough, but you know, the players weren't there. They feel like they need to change. And you go to the recent reviews along with this update and you do see more negative than positive. Still overall mixed per Steam. Yeah, Steam says of all the reviews, 66% are positive. Of recent, it's 45% are positive. So it's definitely more negative than positive, which is reviews tend to skew positive anyway. So that must be really quite like uh, bad. Or at least players must have a bad experience of it or disagree with the changes. Doesn't necessarily mean the game yeah. is bad because there's certainly interesting stuff to talk about here. Yeah, because that's what... That's what's happened. They've said, our game sucks. We're rethinking it entirely. Yep. And the negative reviews are from people who are more acclimatized to the previous game, not the new one that they're making. Yep. So right now, that could be a 44 of a small sample size. Their hope, perhaps, is that more survival games will uh, survival game fans will come over and then it will be more positive amongst them. Now, yeah. as for the core complaints, basically it's just progression being difficult with the schematic requirement uh, grind, basically just, well, be, you know, being an issue, being a lot. Uh, the move in fantasy, right, from, uh, you know, with the walkers, it's now closer to other games in the survival genre. Uh, the shift from PvP to PvE, right? A lot of people don't like that. Some of the thought with the directional, you know, melee combat was they were really trying to get that element of skill-based PvP there. That's maybe less emphasized now. And also there is that the tutorial is kind of functionally uh, non-existent, which is making it pretty hard for people to, uh, to get in. But that said, obviously, take that with a grain of salt. That's mm -hmm. our summary of the situation. Uh, there is, of course, opinion on both sides. Now, what has happened is the player <laughs> counts have increased again right? Um, we see, you know, a Sunday peak of 6,100 people. Those numbers do drop off quite a lot as we go into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, though. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that overall goes. Well, that's kind of how, you, yeah, it's awkward because we'll maybe talk about this at length, but like, obviously players will fall off after a little bit, but then you can't have that problem of, well, is it just going to fall off and stay off again? Should this have been a bigger resurgence? Is this the peak of the resurgence? then it doesn't necessarily seem like, you know, you could say, oh, well, half of the players left. That's not necessarily going to be, li it's literally sort of true, but not really representative. But we do just have like a, it seems it just not quite went as well. 
not quite as well as they'd hoped, but... Yeah, and it brings up a fairly interesting issue with early yeah, access. Very, yeah. Because you can do an early access game that very much could go in any direction. But I think if you go early access, very much committing to your, you know, your core game concept, your core fantasy, as they did, you have an interesting situation where you've got all the bare bones to make that work in gameplay, but you haven't exactly fully field tested that fantasy. So you're in an interesting situation where, in in this case, they locked in something that fundamentally they don't feel is fun, and that they don't feel they could iterate to get to a place where it is fun. Hmm. And they feel like they need to change an element of the core game in order to get things right. But then, because they went to early access, early enough to not have some of this stuff be validated by you know player behavior, people were kind of sold on a different thing. So now what do you do? They believe the game is a square peg round hole situation as things were standing. Hmm. How do you get around that problem? I mean, that's the thing. That's the if, issue. You're, if you're going to rebuild your game from scratch, as they were, no, like, that's the thing with this being such a massive drastic change in so many ways. It's like, clearly some parts of it aren't going to work the way, you know, you would hope because you've already built the game. You can't rebuild your game in a short period of time. Otherwise, you just, that's not how game development works, basically. So it is pretty, uh, it's weird. At least they have, like, the legacy conditions there. So you can kind of, you know, build your own game, in a way. Because you can just kind of build old servers. But there's a whole weird thing about, like, the, the core example here would be Darkest Dungeon, right? Where the Darkest Dungeon story of, hey, this is an early access game, we've made it. Oh, everyone really likes it. This is fucking wonderful. We as developers have a new idea. And this new idea is that corpses remain when you're playing. Corpses remain when you kill them because they act as like body blocks. You have to be break through the corpse or use range to get around it or use like you know certain abilities to dispel them or you can use them maybe even with the right class you can use them to your advantage. And players are like, this fucking sucks. A lot of players went, no, this is not, we don't like this at all. You've made our game harder. You've made this game harder and a little bit more complicated in ways we don't like. And the developers stuck to their guns. They said, no, we think this makes the game better. We're sorry to kind of disagree with uh, you loyal players from early, early access. The options there in the menu for you to kind of make this small change. And there's a couple other different things you could do there. But the default experience is going to be you have corpses. And I think that ultimately worked out because people really, really love Darkest Dungeon. Obviously, that was one of the like, the biggest indie darlings of its era, for sure. Like, maybe it was like six, eight years ago, maybe now. Something like that. There's a massive game for its era. And that's kind of the problem of, if this game, if Last Oasis came out fresh with Season 5 mechanics, it may not have the unique fantasy to have more interest, but it might not have to deal with that legacy of people wanting it to be what it was before, or the existing fantasy. It's like, Basically, change is harder than being fresh, I think. Yeah. And that's what Early Access kind of proven in a couple of ways. Unless you're something like Hades and kind of the, hey, the core is good, we'll build on it linearly. That kind of works. But for something where you're going for rapid iteration in Early Access, that's when you're going to run into like yeah. actual problems. Now, I mean, like with Darkest Dungeon, there is a concession here where you can run a, pri a yeah. private server using the older conditions, but it still fundamentally is like a different path going forward. And it's kind of interesting how they uh, like talked about their reasoning there. Mm -hmm. For some players, this is great. Uh, you'll have to carve out victory after victory. Each defeat will be a lesson in how to do better. The game no longer holds your hands at all. Uh, just you in a sandbox full of tools and uh, deadly dangers, and if you don't think ahead, the world will absolutely punish you. I don't want to sugarcoat that. L overhaul is not a game for everyone, and that's okay. So, there it's is... Ballsy move. There is definitely the instinctual reaction to go, hell yeah, you tell those soft gamers, hmm. you know, they're just not up to snuff for your challenge. You know, and then it immediately evokes the, you know, the get good kind of mantra of, oh, well, fucking Elden Ring's not very good. It's just hard and that's not fun. And then the kind of instinct reaction has to defend that because it is good. And you, being a player who kind of likes that stuff, you know, that's that's a, that's an experience that should be made available and should be tarnished or tarnished. That's fucking Elden Ring's living. Should be like protected, should be, you know, uh, held. But then there's the other side, which is, is that, to use modern lingo, lingo just cope? Is that just a cop-out of going, oh no, you don't like my game because it's not for you. 
no further questions. And there's not really that many people it's for. And that's kind of the awkward part of like, I guess history and success will tell you whether or not you're right to take that stance. So it is either really ballsy or really egotistical, depending on what way you want to look at it or what way it actually turns out in the end. And it could very much be either. And, and to I me, looking at especially if I were someone who played Of Kings and Men early access, and that project obviously went to nowhere, I would maybe think, is are they getting in over their heads with this? Is this just no they think they're better or they're they think they have a good idea and they're kinda of going, ah well fuck feedback. Or is it is that just me kind of reading into it a little bit much? Mm. Well, it's very it's really hard to uh, know. And from the player experience angle, man. It's a very different uh, feeling of early access to say the Valheim, which comes exactly, out having yeah. it a lot more locked in. But ultimately from their perspective yeah. This almost uh, moving of this game more towards survival games, and they themselves are those fans of survival games. Yeah. Uh, but what they say is, it's a fruitless exercise until I can answer why I'm not having fun. Hmm. So ultimately, from the position of the person working in the game, they need to be able to find the game that they're making within the game that they're making. Hmm. And it's a fascinating thing for early access i suppose generally speaking the the core concept of the game is usually pretty nailed in and like you know it's good you know it's going to be successful before you go into early access uh, whereas here it evidently wasn't as much but it was such a strong fantasy that it did super well anyway at least initially yeah so overall with things then that's basically that you know season five uh, stuff has dropped they've actually put out six hot fixes since uh well from from then to now uh 10th of august and it's interesting because they're kind of functionally starting uh, development over again in a way yeah that's not really a good look or sign for anything by default it could turn out really well they could go okay we've actually finally found the fun here we're going to make it but that's kind of entirely on them and i will hopefully you're not doing this because you've still got the money of a load of people who bought this and were kind of just kind of uh didn't refund it even though they don't enjoy it because i feel a wee bit a little bit weird hopefully it is mostly people who are going we completely trust you to make whatever you will of this etc etc but they certainly have a very 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 difficult time ahead of them with this i just hope it kind of works out okay because honestly to look at it maybe not super my kettle of fish because i'm not really into survival games much but that that idea at least i like Totally. I like the idea of this is a brutally hard PV survival game with the skill-based directional melee combat. Certainly sounds like a good version of that would be great. Might not be explosive. Might not be exactly for people who like the social sandbox elements of survival MMOs, which is seemingly most of the gaming population these days. But it's like, it certainly seems if there's... It's that awkward part of do you trust a developer to be engaging entirely in good faith and be capable of making a good game? In that case, you go work away, take our money, we trust you entirely. But as soon as that is a question, if they can do it, then it becomes a little bit messier. So I sure hope their starting development over again works and they don't end up pulling Last Oasis from Steam like happened with Love Kings and Men. Yep. Weird stuff. That's it for today. You played the game. What do you think? You think this is better? Think this is worse? Let us know. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow.